Joining us now, Katie Pavlich, editor of townhall.com and Fox News contributor, and Steve Moore, Freedom Works and Committee to Unleash Prosperity and uh, GovZilla. You know, Katie, j I just want to pick up for a second. Um, I don't know. The trouble is I never really disagree with you, and I never disagree with Steve Moore. But there are moments, <laughs> <laughs> there are moments, you know, I have a lot of pals in the Democratic side. I seriously do. Uh, mm -hmm. On another network, on another show, I used to have them on all the time and this and that and the other thing. But really, in recent years, it's gotten very hard to disagree with any civility, Katie. And I, you know what? Can I just say I miss that? Okay, and I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. There's yeah. a few I'd probably like to have back. But on the whole, if, if I disagree with someone about, oh, my gosh, tax policy or, you know, some dummy economic thing, I don't have to kill them. I can just like talk it through or maybe <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, Larry, you have a very, very successful show on Fox Business, but it also sounds like you'd be a very successful diplomat when it comes to trying to manage tough issues with people who disagree with each other. Uh, we have seen this incivility happen. We've seen it turn into violence, actually, whether it was the, the baseball shooting a couple of years ago where Steve Scalise was nearly killed. Uh, the left tends to take disagreement as you being a bad person rather than just a policy debate. And uh, when you have that kind of attitude, rather than just talking over issues, maybe finding areas of agreement, especially in Washington, you don't tend to get very far, especially when it comes to real solutions that people can count, of, count on from their representatives. Yeah, I think you're right. It's kind of a sad thing. Maybe it'll change. Steve Moore, thing, uh, speaking of incivility, uh, any number of federal district courts have said no to the student loan uh, bailouts and cancellations. Uh, the White House refuses to acknowledge them, and now they're saying they're going to keep the moratorium on uh, student loan payments uh, through June. Okay, through June. This is mid no late November. I mean, there's a certain incivility in that, too. I learned a lot from your show tonight, and I got a great quote of the day from Bill Bennett, which is, there's too much virtue signal signaling and not enough virtue. I just love that. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great say. Mm -hmm. uh, look, how many times do you have to get shut down, shot down by the courts? Now, so basically, Congress has not approved this, Larry. There's never been any co uh, congressional authorization of this half-trillion-dollar student loan bailout bill. The courts have said, no, you can't do it. And, and yet Biden is moving forward with it. Can you imagine if your former boss, Donald Trump, had done this, the left would say he's a dictator. They'd say it anyway, but it's a good point. <laughs> exactly. It's a very good point. <laughs> but you know, Katie, it is, I mean, I'm, yeah. Biden has been lecturing conservatives and Republicans, I don't know, for two years, but certainly the election year, you know, that we're undermining democracy and uh, we don't have respect right. for this. Right. And he, here he goes. He's not paying any attention to what these courts are saying. And they're, I guess they're going to do the same thing on the border, Katie. Uh, Title 42 is yep. supposed to expire in four or five weeks, but they're just going to move right past that like nothing changes. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's like the, 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 the Biden immigration policy, really? We have a, they keep telling us the border's closed. I, w what am I missing here? Well, we'll see what happens with the new Congress. I know that there was supposed to be an announcement today from uh, what he thinks is going to be future majority leader, or leader of, minority leader now, Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, here in a couple of months. Uh, they want to go after uh, Mayorkas, who's, of course, the DHS secretary, for failing the country when it comes to the mission of what DHS is. Their mission actually states that they're supposed to stop the illegal transfer or trafficking of human beings and goods. Well, we're seeing that clearly is not happening. Um, so, but when it comes to the rule of law issue, whether it's on the student loans or on immigration, you know, the Democrats campaigned on, and Joe Biden specifically, on getting back to norms. Well, ignoring two federal courts when it comes to the unconstitutionality of the student loan program or the immigration enforcement that they have a lack of doing uh, would have been called a constitutional crisis many weeks ago uh, in the media and among legal scholars, but instead you're not hearing much about it. Yeah, I mean, um, they're going to continue down the, keep the proven strategies, the proven strategies. Look, I, I, we can disagree about the issue of immigration, illegal immigration, Steve Moore. Um, you know, I'm for immigration as long as it's legal. And I think there's been some pretty good reform measures put out there 
uh, by, by Republicans, by Trump, never gets anywhere. But this stuff is in your face. This is like they're ignoring uh, mm -hmm. the reality of it. That's, Steve, that's the part that troubles me. I want to give you the last word. I just put up on the scoreboard on the full screen all these uh, indicators of the economy. It looks like recession. The GOP Congress, the House, they got to come up fast, it seems to me, with a list of pro-growth prosperity measures. Do you follow? I, I, we need to see it very quickly because the downturn is coming on us. I'm going to give you the last word. Yeah, three initiatives, and I think that you've, uh, you've talked about all three of these. Number one, H.R. 1 has to be turn on the spigots, yes. American oil, gas, coal, all of it. Number two, we do need a trillion-dollar reduction in the, in, the, in the spending after the $4 trillion that Biden has added. And then third of all, I want to see those, uh, those tax cuts that you helped write. They need to be permanently in the law because they work. We have record revenues, Larry. Record revenues with the with the Trump tax cuts. We had record, uh, you know, low unemployment, record low poverty. So if something's working, you stick with it. You know, uh, Katie, I, I'm running out of time, but Bill <laughs> Bill Bennett's dignity of work. You know what would go a long way towards reducing the budget excesses, Katie Pavlich? Workfare, a return to go. workfare and work requirements. Yes, it worked 25 years ago. I'm going to give you the last word. Yeah, you know, look, it's a problem when you have people working in America paying for people who are not working, and that doesn't last very long uh, in a democratic society if you want to have a functioning economy that actually works for everybody, um, that doesn't make us all equally miserable uh, and less wealthy. So uh, that's certainly something that should be considered. Katie Pavlich, Steve Moore, best of the best. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. You too. And thanks ever so Happy much. Happy Thanksgiving.